हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू जेसी ई कनेक्ट सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स सो विल कंटिन्यू मॉड्यूल नंबर फोर दैट इज टर्बाइंस इन दैट इम्पल्स टर्बाइंस सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इंट्रोडक्शन टू टर्बाइंस जनरल लेआउट ऑफ हाइड्रोलेक्ट्रिक हाइड्रोलेक्ट्रिक पावर प्लांट हेड्स एंड एफिशियंसीज ऑफ टर्बाइंस द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ टर्बाइंस सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन Uh, we will be discussing uh, mainly about the felton wheel and its working principle and components and velocity triangles so as uh, we know the felton wheel is a free jet impulse turbine it is named after american engineer lester felton and uh, it was invented between uh, 1829 and 1908 and it is a simple and only hydraulic turbine and which operates efficiently uh, and is invariably used for heads in excess of 450 meter and uh, for a smooth running and uh, good performance are the other common features of this unit so whatever this picture shows the pelton wheel turbine and the pelton wheel turbine generally called as a impulse type of a turbine and uh, the reason for calling this as a impulse type of a turbine uh, the energy available at the inlet of the turbine is only a kinetic energy and pressure is atmospheric from inlet to outlet and it works on the uh, basis of impulse momentum principle and hence the pelton wheel is been called as impulse type of turbine the components of pelton wheels are uh, this is a uh, this shows the picture of a uh, pelton wheel the components of this uh, pelton wheel will are it has a nozzle and a flow regulating arrangement so it has a nozzle and flow regulating arrangement this one nozzle and a flow regulating arrangement and the second component is a runner and a bucket this is the runner the rotating part of the turbine is called as a runner and bucket arrangement and the third part it has casing and fourth one is a braking jet and this pelton wheel is a tangential flow impulsive type of a turbine and as we know it is named after la pelton an american engineer and is suitable for high heat and low discharge and this schematic uh, picture uh, shows the pelton wheel and the main components of this pelton wheel are uh, nozzle and flow regulating arrangements runner and buckets casing and uh, braking jet so so we'll discuss one by one so nozzle and flow regulating arrangement uh, as we know uh, the water from the head race mm -hmm. comes down along the penstock and the penstock is nothing but a long uh, uh, pipe and the, it enters the nozzle means the this penstock is this is a penstock and this penstock is been fitted with the nozzle at the end of the uh, pipe this is the nozzle uh, from where the jet issues and is impinges on the buckets of the pelton wheel uh, the change of momentum of the fluid as it changes its direction along the bucket uh, results in rotation of the wheel then the flow of nozzle uh, that is a flow through the nozzle of nozzle can be controlled by means of this uh, the whatever, whatever the water is being flowing through the nozzle which is been controlling by this uh uh by means of an axial moment of spear this is a by axial moment of a spear or it is called as a needle a uh, fixed to the end of the rod uh, when the speed of the pelton wheel uh increases when the speed of pelton wheel increases the spear is uh pushed forward into the nozzle and hence the quantity of water striking the bucket is 
reduced. In the speed of the wheel falls, the spear is drawn back and it allows a large quantity of larger quantity of water to pass through the nozzle. So this is the function of uh, this spear and uh, this is the arrangement that is nozzle uh, with the flow regulating arrangement. The next is the runner with the buckets. Uh, runner is nothing but a rotating part of the turbine. Here it is been showing. This is the runner and it is a rotating part of the turbine and uh, on the runner, on the periphery of the runner, the buckets are been fixed at equidistant and this shows the sh and this runner is coupled with the shaft and this is the shape of the bucket. Uh, the shape of the bucket is uh, like two spoons when you join two spoons together whatever the shape you get uh, that it looks like that shape this bucket and uh, this bucket will be having a um, uh, common dividing edge this is shown here this is a common dividing edge the incoming jet whatever the jet is striking to this bucket the incoming jet of water meets the bucket and at the central edge and that is called a splitter when the where the jet strikes at the center of this bucket this part is called as a splitter and this splitter uh, divides its, its uh, divides itself into two parts and after turning through 160 to 170 degree and it leaves the jet from its outer edge it leaves the jet from the outer edges and the advantages of having uh, two spoons lies uh, lies in the fact that the axial forces that is forces perpendicular to the direction of motion uh, which neutralizes each other uh, being equal and opposite and hence bearings supporting the wheel shaft that is this one the bearings supporting the wheel shaft uh, are not subjected to any axial thrust and the bottom portion of this bucket is cut off look at this figure the bottom portion of this bucket is been cut off here look at this bucket it is the bottom portion is been cut off here you can look here the bottom portion is cut off this is done because the surface of the spoon at these portions if you take the surface of the spoon uh, at these portions is raised uh, and what is striking at this portions will not be able to turn through uh, 160 to 170 degree as it is a desired angle required in a Pelton wheel uh, but instead it will be deflected back thereby disturbing the incoming bucket uh, so the jet sorry the water jet after impinging uh, on the buckets is deflected through an angle of 160 to 170 degree instead of 180 degree so that it may not be uh, uh, may not strike the back uh, strike the back of the incoming bucket and retard the motion of the wheel so that is the reason uh, why this uh, uh, bottom of the bucket is been cut uh, then next is a casing and it is made up of cast iron or a fabricated steel plates the main function of the casing is to prevent the splashing of water and to discharge the water into the tail race and uh, uh, it is important to uh, mention here that the casing has no hydraulic function just it is a safeguard for the turbine the next uh, will be uh, sorry the next uh, will be the braking jet one more component the braking jet here you can see the braking jet will be provided braking jet and when the nozzle is uh, uh, completely closed if this nozzle is completely closed this one 
by uh, pushing the uh, spear in forward direction or by moving the spear in the forward direction the amount of striking the runner uh, reduces the reduces almost to zero but the runner due to inertia even though it has been uh, closed the nozzle has been closed because of the inertia the runner goes on revolving for a long time this runner goes on revolving long time to stop this runner in a short time a small nozzle is been provided which directs the jet of water on the back of the veins so which directs the jet of water on the backs of the veins and this jet of water is called as breaking jet okay so these are the components of the pelton wheel next so this shows the configuration of water flow in a buckets how the jet is being striking the bucket this is the uh, just uh, side view of the bucket you can see the bucket the, actually the bucket will be like this uh, then you join the two spoons together whatever the shape you get uh, so that in that shape the bucket will be there and uh, this is the curved spoon shaped buckets and the rotation is sorry so here uh, the runner is coupled with the shaft so this is the shaft and this is the rotating shaft and this is the water pressure and water is uh, striking at the center of the bucket and it is deflecting so runner or a pelton wheel next the basic working principle when a high speed water jet injected through a nozzle hits buckets of a pelton wheel it induces an impulsive force hence this pelton wheel is been also calling as a impulsive turbine and the force makes the turbine to rotate and the rotating shaft runs a generator uh, which is been coupled with the shaft and produces electricity pelton turbines transforms kinetic energy of water jet into a rotational energy in the velocity triangle how to draw velocity triangle for this particular uh, pelton wheel bucket it is very very important to draw velocity triangle uh, velocity triangle helps us to calculate the force exerting by the jet and also uh, the work done by the jet or the power uh, of the jet can be easily calculated through the velocity triangle and this velocity triangle uh, can be drawn at the splitter and at Uh, and at outlet velocity triangle uh, of the bucket uh, so this uh, figure shows how the velocity triangle can be drawn for the pelton wheel bucket and this is the show, this shows the uh, side view of the uh, bucket so this is uh, this is the side view of the bucket means how to draw the pelt uh, velocity triangle for the pelton wheel so this picture shows how the jet is being uh, st uh, striking the uh, blades of the bucket uh, as the water energy is being uh, that is the water is uh, up applying a force on the buckets and the uh, force is being transferring from the bucket to the runner and runner to the shaft and shaft to the generator and this figure shows the shape of the veins or the buckets here the shape of the vein or a bucket of the pelton wheel and the jet of water from the nozzle here you can see the jet of water from the nozzle strikes the bucket tangentially it strikes the bucket tangentially but at it strikes at the splitter exactly at the center so this is uh, actually it strikes the jet at the splitter this is a splitter uh, which splits the jet into two parts so after striking the one it it splits into two parts the water will be lights over the surface and it exits like this um, these parts of the jet glides over the inner surface and uh, comes out at the outer edge it comes out at the outer edge and uh, this Uh, that is uh, this figure shows 
how the jet is being uh, uh, striking the bucket and how it is uh, going out it shows uh, which has been showing by drawing a velocity triangle the inlet velocity triangle is drawn at the splitter and the outlet velocity triangle is being drawn at the outer edge of the bucket and this uh, velocity triangle is been uh, uh, drawn by the same method as we uh, studied uh, previously since the jet is striking just uh, look at this figure since the jet 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 is striking tangentially tangentially so and that too at the center hence the inlet velocity triangle will be straight line so on this straight line only you can mark the absolute velocity and you can mark uh, here the it shows that v1 shows the absolute velocity and u1 is the uh, direction uh, the velocity of the vane it is velocity of this vane moving in forward direction and vr1 shows the relative velocity and vw1 will be the whirl velocity and the flow velocity in that inlet inlet will be zero here for the belt and field and it, uh, just you look at the outlet velocity triangle and it will be having a vr2 v2 and vf2 all uh, components of velocity will be there okay so you know how to draw this uh, velocity triangle we have ex uh, explained uh, and earlier so just to uh, remember the drawing up a velocity triangle for a Pelton wheel bucket and this um, triangle will be using uh, to calculate the force exerting by the jet and also for the calculation purpose I hope you understood this one so in next uh, uh, class we will derive the equation that is uh, work done for a Pelton wheel by utilizing this uh, velocity triangle so this is very very important and try to understand how the jet is coming and hitting the uh, blade and uh, how it is exiting okay and here it is been shown the angle of deflection also and the jet is hitting at the center of the bucket that is at splitter and uh, the, why the name is splitter it splits into two parts the jet is being splitting into two parts and uh, having the same magnitude both the side then it exits okay i hope you understood this one thank you